We start with a puzzle. Big boats with sails can move very fast, but is it really possible for air to be so strong? The solution will be given near the end of the video. Welcome to this Nothing Nerdy lesson on impulse. Here is the statement from the IB Physics Guide. You have to be able to calculate the quantity called impulse. It's very helpful when we want to understand sports or car safety from the point of view of physics. Here is a typical multiple choice question on this topic. You should be able to answer it by the end of the video. The connection between momentum and force is made clear in Newton's second law. Here we learned that force is the rate of change of momentum. Now the formula is rearranged. An unbalanced force will cause a change in momentum for a body, but the time for which the force lasts will affect the change in momentum. This car is pushed by a rocket. If the rocket pushes for one second, it will gain an amount of momentum, but if the rocket pushes for more seconds, the increase in momentum will be proportionately greater. The change in momentum can be calculated by multiplying the force by the time that it is applied. Another word for change in momentum is impulse. Here is the definition of impulse. It's the change in momentum, and like momentum, it's a vector. The unit can be written as kilogram meters per second, like any momentum, but it most often is shown as newton seconds, which we can see is also correct from the formula that multiplies as force and time taken. So let us consider what will happen when we hit different objects. In this situation, we hit the rock, the tennis ball and the paper so that they all experience the same change in momentum. This will not necessarily need the same force each time. It depends how long they're in contact with the bat. The harder the ball, the shorter the time it will be touching the bat, and so we can see that a larger force will be needed to change the momentum of the hardest ball. And the same applies when we try to stop a moving object. The harder it is, the more it will hurt us, unless we can lengthen the time it takes to stop so that the force needed becomes less. So a catcher's mitt is made of materials which bend slightly when a ball hits it. You can also pull your hand backwards as you receive the ball. An airbag works this way. The driver is brought to a stop over a longer period of time than if she'd hit her head on the steering wheel. And cars are designed with so-called crumple zones, so that the deceleration of the driver in a crash takes more time, which reduces the forces which would cause injury. Here is a calculation of the impulse which happens to this ball when it bounces off the wall. It's travelling at 25 metres per second and hits the wall at an angle of 40 degrees. There is no loss of kinetic energy and the ball rebounds at the same speed. Here are the figures added to the diagram. The question is about impulse, which means how much did the momentum of the ball change? The angle with which the ball hits the wall makes the calculation a bit more complex. Since momentum is a vector, the direction is important. There are components of velocity parallel and perpendicular to the wall. Here are the velocity vectors with their components. The green component changes direction. Initially it points to the right and then it points to the left. But the red component does not change direction. Therefore, we can see that we only need to deal with the green components perpendicular to the wall. This also tells us that the force will be perpendicular to the wall, which makes sense. The positive direction is to the right, and to find a change, we always subtract the initial quantity from the final quantity. Because we chose the right-hand direction as positive, the final result is a negative number, minus 33.3. And now we work out the change in momentum where the mass is 0 0.180 because we must use kilograms and the resulting impulse is 6.0 newton seconds. We are only entitled to state two significant figures because that's how precisely the velocities were stated. But the zero after the decimal point 
is important. And the direction is to the left because the answer is negative. The momentum changes away from the wall. This makes sense because it's the wall which is exerting the force. We do not have enough information here to work out what the force is because we do not know how much time the ball was in contact with the wall. Impulse is change in momentum, which is mass times change in velocity. We substitute in the numbers we know, 5 times 10 to the 6, and the change in velocity is just 1. So the answer is 5 million. Newton seconds is the unit of impulse, and here we're looking at kilonewton seconds, and therefore the answer is 5,000 kilonewton seconds B. Here is the puzzle we asked at the beginning of the lesson. Air is made of molecules, and though each is very tiny, there are many trillions of them in a small volume. The average speed of the molecules is the speed of the wind. When they hit a sail, each molecule loses its momentum, which is a small impulse. The combined effect of all these trillions of impulses and the large area of the sail gives even a very heavy boat enough momentum to move.